Welcome to Hot Rod School 101, where you'll learn to make a cool custom, because every step is here, coming together to celebrate a heavy metal icon. And as our ride evolves, these guys will do the welding, because when metal meets metal, this is who you want bonding your gear. We want to build like the average guy would build it at home. Miller Electric has built welders for 75 years, and to mark the event, they'll make a ride that has top builders in agreement. Works for me. Work for you, Pat? So far. <laughs> it's a Roadster pickup going back to the day. A 29 Ford pulling a big surprise of its own. As the ride is being built, we'll follow every stage, always checking in with Miller, authorities on that connection between welding and hot rods. And as they say here, dream it, weld it. It's Miller's Killer Roadster, fired up and blazing here on Rides. Ford, the Roadster, and the Pickup. Since the day an engine turned wheels, that name and those notions have crossed paths, mixing three ideas that have never gone out of style in the automotive world. Early era Ford Roadsters are the hot rod standard, representing high speed, open air, and most of all, a cool way to be seen. The pickup, on the other hand, has always been a symbol for working, letting everyone know that you know how to get the job done. By way of early production models and years of custom building, the world has seen that tricked up mixture known as the Roadster Pickup. We're gonna build a 29 Ford Roadster Pickup. That's the year that Miller started, so we selected that as, you know, as their 75th, uh, last year was their 75th year of it. The Roadster Pickup, a ride that will now say happy birthday. If Miles Miller were to buy a pickup truck when he started the business, hopefully it would be 29 Ford. So that's the reason we're going back. It'll have the original Miller logo on the side of the door that, would, that they used in, in 29. Only difference is now it's going to have a V8 engine in it, and a little more horsepower, and air conditioning, and heat, and all the modern conveniences. Nothing says work and play like the 29 Roadster pickup. They have a small uh, 302 V8 in it, uh, C4 transmission. Uh, we're putting a removable hard top on it. Uh, have putting power windows in it. Power windows for a ride based on a Ford that had no windows. On top of that, it'll be a quaint model like this getting a big motor, some 300 horses more than it originally had. And it'll need a big motor if it's gonna pull one of these behind it. Whatever the plans, time is of the essence. For their anniversary, Miller wants this all ready three months from now. Pat's been working on this project for weeks, and like all projects, they start somewhere. This one originated from a sketch. Started off with uh, a drawing, a concept drawing. A friend of mine, Frank Banna, here in, in Louisville, did the concept of it. He and I talked over the phone two or three times about what we thought it should look like. And now it's here at Pat Keating's, the hot rod shop where it's going to get a hands-on approach, resulting in a ride that will feel both polished and personal. Once completed, this project will look classic, but it's coming together without classic stock. Everything here is new, from the frame, to the engine, to the recreated body. The ride is a 29, and even though these men probably missed that year by a fair margin, it's safe to say that this bunch has respect for such an era. At that time, cars weren't allowed to go over 20 in the city and 40 anywhere else. But with its new V8, this 29 will hit 100. It takes shape in Pat Keating's shop. Wayne Reese is here, fitting parts onto the chassis. Now to understand this progress, we need to go back a few months to the frame. We want to go with a TCI frame and suspension, probably one of the better known ones in, in the industry. It does a quality job. I think the company started building Model A frames. TCI is short for total cost involved. For years, they've built custom frames and components for vintage replicas and restorations. TCI can build it and ship it to the weekend mechanic. And if your project is based on a Model A, they'll make a unit that has its specs from one of the early pieces of automotive ironwork. This was the original Model A that uh, Ed, our founder, picked up in 1974 and built all of our fixtures off of. So that's the original piece that got us all started here. It got them started, 
and TCI has always paid homage to that one little frame that launched one big company. That was the first chassis that we ever designed and built, and uh, that's where we get our recognitions from from the beginning. With restorations and replicas all the rage, TCI is busy. The demand for our product is very high right now. The last two years in a row, we've reached uh, 500 a year. That's what we've averaged basically for the last uh, four or five years. So what are the steps to building a TCI frame? First, the rails are cut. Then they're boxed and welded, probably with a Miller welder. The welds are then carefully ground down to make them smooth. That long rail gets a series of pie cuts to facilitate bends. Soon, the cross members cross into this project, and those pieces will hook up with the rails. They'll combine forces in this fixture, an appliance that holds it together for welding. It'll match the exact dimensions Henry Ford engineered for the Model A quite a few decades ago. Total cost involved also builds other restoration components in its machine shop. If you're a hot rodder, you'll feel it's all for a just and noble cause, bringing restored Model A's up to today's driving standards. We make our own steering arms, caliper brackets in-house, ball joint cups, all the tubing for the A-arms are machined here and then bent and then sent back to the uh, back shop for welding and fabrication. It's seven years of experience that has fixed the drop axle onto the frame's front end. We've been here for seven years. Wouldn't go anywhere else. After that, it's time for more strength welds, with our rails on the move and a simpler mounting rack entering the picture. And soon, it's the reemergence of a dear friend, welding. Everything we do is welded up in a fixture. All of the A-arms, the cross members, all the rear end housing, they all have a fixture. Basically everything that we make, we weld in-house. In-house and soon ready for a check of what fits where for the future. Now they mock up parts to check lines and clearance issues. We want to make sure that we have eight inches for the, for the water pump plus three inches for the electric fan. Uh, that's enough clearance, 11 inches right there. Motor mounts are welded using this mock engine as a guide. The finishing touches on this frame, attaching the power brake booster and running brake lines. It's now ready for Pat's shop in Louisville, Kentucky. Of course, here at Pat's, we leap ahead to where the frame has already received work. Wheels and tires have joined that Roush engine. And remember, this is just one of two V8s going into this project, with the other being adapted to fire up a Miller Trailblazer welder. <laughs> Decades ago, big thinkers like Niles Miller saw the future, knowing cars need metal and metal needs welding. This project is a fun tribute to that fact. It's a ride made for a history of workers and craftsmen. The car belongs to, to our people, the men and women of Miller Electric, that we're going to share with our, our customers, our distributors, our end users, and letting people know that there's a fun way to use uh, the welding equipment in today's uh, work environment, as well as at home. When you build a hot rod, you bring things together. And now, not only is there a connection between everyone who worked on this project, there's also a link between a company's past and its present. That, even beyond welding, is one cool and very electrifying bond. Yeah.